Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the No DQ panel here on NoDQ.com. I am Aaron Rift as always. I am being joined by my usual panel guests. First, we have the West Coast professor, good old JM, Jeff Meacham, trivia extraordinaire, former No DQ wrestling trivia champion. We are also being joined by the so-called greatest columnist in the history of the galaxy, Mr. I Virtue. thought we established I, I thought we established that I already am and it's no longer so called or self proclaimed. Hey, Jeff Meacham said he's the greatest, but he's the greatest. That's true. Whatever Jeff in my says, own way, it, it must be in true. my own way, I'm the greatest, absolutely. Well, right. you're not Ernest Miller great, but you you'll have to do. Okay. Ernest Miller wasn't Ernest Miller great. Come on. Well, yeah. I'm not gonna dance. I'm not gonna dance. He could dance. The cat could dance, that's for sure. He can't get dance. But, but he did not have dance James Brown. That is true. And he was never a WWE World Champion, which is our topic today. And we are being joined by a special panelist guest today. Ben, how's it going? Uh, again, thanks, um, thanks for having me on the show. I've been watching it okay. for a long time and I uh, can't wait to get started. Well, thank you for being on. Great to have you on. And uh, you are actually, I believe, our youngest panel guest. You were 14 years old. Is that correct? Yeah. So, All right, so just uh, Aaron, take that in. We've been doing this longer than he's been alive. Ben, I was fourteen in nineteen ninety four. Wow, Russell, WrestleMania ten era. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So we will be talking about a few guys that are before your time, Ben. And I guess we'll start with that. And if there's anything you would like to add, feel free to do so. Um, we're gonna recap the greatest WWE title reigns of all time now now ben, now to, oh, clar to, Aaron, to clarify that we mean the title that goes back to 1963 buddy rogers and bruno yes. and not the not the big gold belt not the oh. universal title the original wwf championship. right that lineage yep. the wwe title now ben i'm gonna ask you a question i'm gonna i'm gonna put you on the spot here trivia question do you know who has the longest wwe title reign in history no. No idea. Okay. Jeff, do you know? Why would Bruno. you ask him? You know he knew. Bruno San Martino. Do you and, know? And you know what? Not only the single longest reign, but the single combined total as well. Yes. Do you know how long his first reign was? 2,803 days. Holy crap. Jeff is doing his homework. He wants that. I just hey, saw that. Hey, I just saw that off. online and I, I still didn't remember it. I got my ass kicked on that last, on the episode 10 with Greg. I am not screwing around anymore, okay? I'm not. I'm done with it. I'm done screwing around. Yeah, so Bruno San Martino, when you think of great WWE title reigns, he has to be right up there at the top because he dominated the WWF as it was back then. And how many years was that? Something like seven years, Jeff? Almost, almost eight years. Remember, he, he won the title in May of 63 and didn't lose it till January of 71. So, you know, that's if you if you, if you think, think about that now, we were all astonished at CM Punk's 434 days as WWE champion just a few years ago. Bruno was champion non stop, no losses for almost eight years. Yeah. Jeff, how many times did he sell out the garden during that stretch? I mean, <laughs> that's why he was champion, right? Including the Hall of Fame induction, it was like 94 something or something like that, 90 something times continuous consecutive sellouts. Him and Vince yep. Sr. ruled the garden. I don't care if the Rangers were there or boxing or whatever. Vince McMahon, Vincent J. McMahon, and Bruno San Martino were the garden. Yep. Yeah, it's hard to believe that somebody could hold the title for that long in today's era when the titles change. It wouldn't happen. So often. Now, you have to consider that when Bruno was champion, he would only defend the title, what, like once every month, if that, maybe well, you know, five or six you times a year? Well, well, you more than Brock Lesnar does. Oh. Well, no, that, that, I, I was damn. That's all I was just going to say. They're, they're trying to go toward that now with Brock being the big fight guy, the big guy that shows up, you know, here and there to defend the title. They're trying to have a big fight atmosphere for Brock because every month at the Garden, the, the, the little shows in between along the, the northeast part of the country would build toward getting the shot at Bruno at the Garden. That's what they were building toward. So, you know, they're trying to do that with Brock, but the problem is today's WWE fan, I'm sure Ben can relate because he is, he is their target demographic right now. You don't want to wait every month for a title match. You want to have it now, now, now. 
Well, Ben, let me ask you, what do you think is a good length of time for a world champion? Would you like to see somebody hold the title for seven years, or do you, do you think that's way too long? No, that's way too long. What would you say is ideal, like an, an ideal title reign? How long? Like, re like what CM Punk had. Yep, there you go. Yep. Yeah, that's a good point. Punk was champion for 434 days, which is a little over a year, right? Yeah, he held it yep. from... Survivor Series. Survivor Series until the following Rumble, yep. Yep, I was at that Rumble. So, yeah, about a year, I think, is a good amount of time in today's era. And most of the, the major title reigns in recent history have gone about nine months to a year. Now, besides Bruno, the other guy that had a really long title reign was Mr. Bob Backlund, who held the title for 2,135 days, which I only know because I'm looking at it and I wrote it down. Jeff? However... If you're friends with Antonio Inoki, not so much. Because technically, Antonio Inoki defeated Bob Backlund for the WWF Championship in November of 79. And then Backlund regained it only because Inoki won the rematch under controversial circumstances, vacated the title. And I have video evidence of this. Bob Backlund defeats Bobby Duncan in a Texas death match a few weeks later. If a garden or somewhere in the Northeast and becomes once again the undisputed champion. Yeah, and I think WWE does not recognize that though. Much like they some don't. of Ric Flair's uh, yeah. title wins and well, losses, some of those well, are not the, counted. Well, the, because I'm Jeff Meacham, I've been tabulating Ric Flair. I have video evidence of how many I think it is. So we're gonna have it when, when we have that discussion of NWA championships and Ric Flair. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely go to that there. But you know. Regardless of Backlund losing or whatever against Anoki, the, the fact is Backlund was the next Bruno. He was the guy that Vince Sr. said, okay, Bruno is stepping away. He's doing his thing. I, and what's so bad is they gave the belt to superstar Billy Graham, who was arguably the greatest heel WWF champion of all time, WWE champion of all time. But he only reigned it for, he only had it for like 10 months. And the right. only reason why yeah, I'll agree with you on that about superstar Billy Graham is because they didn't allow Ivan Koloff to have the belt long enough while he was a transitional champion from Bruno to Pedro. Well, Ivan well, Koloff, well, if he would have held that belt at uh, six months, a year, the heat would have been phenomenal. I, th I think the problem with Ivan Koloff, though, because I'm sure you've seen Ivan Koloff later when he was with NWA and Jim Crockett and whatnot, that Ivan Koloff would have been a good WWF champion. The Ivan Koloff that beat Bruno, Bruno and shocked the world, he was slow, he was plotting, he just wasn't, he wasn't as good as he was with Jim Crockett where he was teaming up with Nikita and Crusher Khrushchev. That guy could move around the ring. Ivan Koloff in 1971, not so much. Right. Um, well, let's, let's talk about something a little bit more current. Um, ben, let's get your, your thoughts. Um, in your opinion, who do you think had the greatest... WWE title reign of all time, and we'll talk about that person. Um, Shawn Michaels, the first, his first title reign, the first time he won the title. Yeah, that was 1996, the boyhood dream coming true, and that is one of my all-time favorite ones personally because um, I remember he had a lot of really good title defenses. He had the first title yeah. defense against Diesel at Good Friends, Better Enemies, and that was arguably Kevin Nash's best match in his entire career. I mean, you guys tell me a better Kevin Nash match. I'm not sure there is one. As far as, as, far as his one. WWE career, yeah. there is no better. I mean, I mean, WCW, you know, early on when he was competing, but uh, that, that was still in tag team ranks. So Yeah, and then uh, he had the matches with the British Bulldog, which were good. He had the SummerSlam match with Vader. He had the, the Mind Games match with Mankind, which was an excellent match. A lot of people consider that to be very underrated. Yeah, Sean, go ahead, go ahead, Virtue. Sean's, was this his third title reign um, with the DX era leading to WrestleMania 14 with Austin? Yeah, I yeah. think that was his best because he not only was obnoxious with DX, then, you know, when business picked up, he got serious. He, he barely powdered. He got right into everybody's face. He built that all the way up to WrestleMania 14 with Tyson. And even though there were problems backstage, supposedly, he still – dropped the belt to Austin, and created the Austin era as, as the top guy. Sean's that title reign is why Sean deserved to be on this list. And his first one was great, too, but I my think opinion well, well, was well, the well, best one because well, of all the no. title defenses. And wait, there's one more guy I want to add before you finish, Jeff. Okay. Psycho Sid, the Survivor yeah. Series, when Sean lost the title, that was a very entertaining match. Maybe 
maybe Sid's best match. I mean, a lot of people would argue that was among his best matches of his career. What do you think, Jeff? I just well, yeah. I think I, I I think Sid's best match. Never mind. No, that was gonna be cruel. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> oh no! Wait, wait, wait! <laughs> now you got to talk. Was it Sin? Definitely, definitely. Um, uh, no, Sean. I, I think the problem with Shawn Michaels' first reign is what everybody talks about. It did. It, they weren't drawing a whole lot of money during that reign, so people don't look at it as favorable as the DX reign. Um, you know, DX. You know, they were starting to pick up business when Brett was champion '97, leading into the Montreal Screwjob, leading into WrestleMania 14. Business was picking up. They were starting to gain ground on WCW. So I totally agree with Virtue that Shawn's best time, even though it was controversial the entire time. His third reign was his most defining because he was serious in the ring. He had the, the, the backup muscle to help him out when he needed it because he was a heel. And he went out gracefully, even though he was in the worst pain he was ever in in his life. He still went out like a champion. And I know like, he didn't defend frequently during that yeah, reign. He had like but three the, title the, defenses. But the, match, the 98 Rumble, I believe, was at the casket match against mm-hmm. Taker. Let's yep. not forget about that. I mean, he put his body on the line and it cost him four plus years of his career. And he still yeah. went on to have that match with Austin. So it can be a short, you know, amount of matches versus that first title reign. Sean delivered that. Sean was a superstar more, more than ever in his career at that point. I want to see any athlete take a bump anywhere onto the corner of a casket and finish a match and then do a title defense two months later. I defy that. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. I'm biased, but oh well. Well, no, so am I. That's what I'm saying. I, I agree with you, what you said. I agree. Yeah. The fact that, you know, Shawn Michaels is Shawn Michaels, that's the only reason that ever happened. Yeah. If it had been anybody else take that bump against that casket, it would have been the end of everything, and everything would have been changed right away. There would have been no delay until he gets better. He wouldn't have gotten better if it wasn't Shawn Michaels. Well, so that's two to one, uh, because Aaron liked the first reign. So Ben, yeah. was what What do you pick on Michael's reign? Well, he I mean, he said probably... the first one. He said the first you one. Did? What do you think, Ben, of the of the title reigns? You would say the first one, right? For Sean, HBK. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we need the comments. We need people to defend either Jeff or me or Ben and Aaron on Sean's best title reign. And don't say the second, because that reign was bogus. All right, Ben. <laughs> well, let me ask you, you know, Sean Michaels – Bret Hart, they had a tremendous feud in WWE. Um, before we, we started this video, we mentioned Bret Hart. Um, which Bret Hart title reign would you say is the best one, in your opinion? The second one. The second one, which was 94, correct? When he beat Yoko Zuna. Yeah, yep. um, I agree so with that. What do you remember the most from that, that title reign, specifically matches? Um, not a lot. I just know that he was on the top, on top for a long time, and I watched the match where he won the title. His, I mean, the SummerSlam match. What about that with Owen? Yeah, Cage I was going to say Brett, yeah. Brett's entire second that. reign was defined by the Owen Hart feud. Yeah, yeah, and that was a great feud. That was very entertaining. Yep. The the cage match, of course, um, and the the way he lost the title. That was, I was a memorable gonna say, match. I'll say he lost it because of Owen too, if you remember. Yeah. Owen put on a yeah, great uh, performance there, being all that, concerned. Dude, dude, I wanted to give Owen an Emmy for that. Are you kidding me? That was amazing how he made a Slammy. He should have gotten a Slammy. That, that should have been when they brought back the Slammys right there. That's right. I agree with that. We always seem to praise Owen. Every video we do, he gets a lot of praise. Legendary. So. Legendary. Be, that's why. Be, 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 because he should have been. He should have been WWE champion. We said that many times. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Ben, like ben even guy. loves Owen Hart. Look at that. He's a guy that, you know, I think definitely had a Hall of Fame career. I, I'm, I'm realizing it more and more. Every time we do one of these videos, uh, greatest of, he always seems to be brought up for some reason. And, and the only reason he's not is the reason we all need to respect. It is what it is. He, he'll, he won't be in the Hall of Fame until Martha decides it's time. And that's, that, that's her call. That's her situation, not ours. So. Yeah. Um, definitely, I think Brett's second one was, was his best one that I can remember. His first Although, one was pretty good. He, he had a lot of title defenses in his first one, and they were making a big deal out of that. He did. I will say the fifth one, it ended very badly, and it started off controversial, but it, just the intensity yes. of Bret Hart in reign number five and the intensity of the feud with DX and the Hart Foundation being back and Brett's, Brett's entire demeanor in 1997, made for a great championship run. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and the, the, the promos with Sean, you know, oh. leading up to Survivor Series when he, when he called Triple H. Um, well, I'm not going to say what he said about him. 
He pulled a Jeff Meacham. Um, uh, well, what is that? Because I'm sure like 99% of the people watching this have no idea what you're referencing. Well, for the early referencing, when I, when I did drunk talk wrestling, I called people a homo and they didn't like that very much. So that's what Brett called uh, Sharp Lash and John. I called yeah. them a bunch of homos. That so. was an intense. Yeah. And then you had the nation and, and the, the whole racist thing. And, and, and how about Sean and Brett with the Sunny Days comment? That was big time. <laughs> oh, my God. That was really cringeworthy. Yeah. But anyways, so, we're, we're getting off topic a little bit here. Into the we're weeds. talking yeah. about the actual title reign. So, Jeff, we haven't heard much from you being sarcastic, yeah, we there, have. of course. <laughs> yeah, we have. Yeah, we have. Uh, Jeff, okay. okay uh, your, w- your favorite title reign that we have not mentioned yet? That we've not mentioned? Well, I'm, I'm going to say Hulk Hogan, of course. Because, you know, it's, First it's uh, regardless of the in-ring work itself, four years as champion. You know, I mean, no, nobody, drew nobody drew better. Nobody drew better. Nobody. And, and you know what? It's funny. People say that Austin drew better. It's like, you know, at the time, if you compare the, the money of the day between 1998 and 1984, it kind of, yeah. you know, it kind of balances out there. Hulk Hogan was the guy that the, our Vince McMahon hits the wagon to and pew, off they went together. And they were right there with each other. People say, well, Vince did this. No, Hogan and Vince did it together. Absolutely. And Hulk Hogan's first run as WWE champion from 84 to 88 brought the WWF to the promised land, and they have never looked back. And, then, and I, I'm going to piggyback off that, Jeff. Savage's first reign. Yes. yes. Awesome. Yeah. I agree on that. Awesome. It played well, from well, WrestleMania 4 to WrestleMania 5. It's just so funny. Every single reign of Randy since then has paled in comparison, be it WWF or WCW. And yeah. you got to remember, every one of them was ended by either Hogan or Flair. That's a funny statistic yep. right there. I mean, again, is. Jeff funnier, is the West yep. Coast professor. He knows. Yep. Yeah, the whole Mega Bet. Power storyline made that very memorable. It really yeah. did. It was awesome. Virtue? Ben, would you would you consider – I'm going to ask Ben this since this is a guy that he'll, he'll know. Do you consider Brock Lesnar as WWE champion one of the greatest? No. We're probably going back to 03, 04, yeah, or 03. right around there. Yeah. Okay, no? yeah, yeah. You would say the 03 one was pretty good? Yeah. Well, the 03 one was uh, the Iron Man match when he beat Kurt Angle. I believe that's when he won the title. And then he lost it to Eddie at No Way Out. That was a good reign. I I thought that that was a pretty good reign. I wouldn't say it was among the best reigns, but I think it was a pretty good one. That was one of the best SmackDown eras, too. I think Brock between 2000 and 2004 was a really solid WWE champion off and on when he was champion. He was... He was the guy that people were chasing. He he'd be the he'd be the hunter every once in a while, but most of the time he was the hunted. That's how it should have been. Right. I mean, I, remember I, remember what he did to Zach Gowan? Oh my God! Yes, that was brutal. No, I mean, it's, that, it's, funny. Never it's funny. I remember that era of SmackDown. Besides the Brock Zach Gowan thing you just mentioned, I remember that era of SmackDown for Big Show, Baseball Swinging, Rey Mysterio around the same time. Yeah, yeah, wow. that was what Backlash two thousand three. Three. Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, and that, that was the show that we first saw John Cena challenge for the title. Yes, that's true. And Brock and Brock handed him his rear end, and that's okay. <laughs> Cena would get him back. What was it? Eleven As, years or nine years later. Well, okay. The problem is Cena got him back. He got his ass handed for fifteen minutes, and then he beat him with a brass knuckle shot and FU. That was it. Like really? Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then Brock <sighs> beat him at SummerSlam. The jo- way it should have been done. John Cena has yet to get a definitive. Uh, a clear victory over Brock Lesnar, still. Yeah, well, I, I think the one in, in 2012 was pretty clean, but whatever. It was an extreme but, but, rules match, so, you know, well, no, I, I, I'm not saying clean. What I'm saying is Brock beat Which him up for work. almost 20 minutes, and then Cena hits two moves, less than his five moves to do him, and he gets the victory. Well, so it was, since it, we're on the so topic... Elephant in the, ro- elephant in the room, John Cena. Yeah, I was just going to say thank you, Virtue. I was going to... Trans- transition into that. So uh, John Not Cena's bad. first title reign was 2005. He beat JBL. Um, I guess we should talk about JBL. I have mixed feelings about it. I honestly think it sucked, and I want to talk about it on the worst video. But do you guys think JBL, great title reign, bad title reign? Well, well it's funny. The, the three of us and I think Greg and even Kyle went back and forth on this in the chat. I, you know, for, for everybody that criticizes Jinder Mahal, and well, he'll be on the worst video, I'm sure, because 
I think both of them are do- did their job. Jinder Mahal right now is doing his job yeah. as WWE champion where he's drawn in the heat. He's he's making people want to not attendance wise because attendance sucks, but they're they're getting the network and they're and they're watching Wait a SmackDown. They're Roman watching Reigns said it's great. What are you talking about, Jeff? This is Roman Reigns compared to me. Sorry, not happening. But Roman Reigns um, is a baby face. You're a heel. Exactly. Um, <laughs> he, he, heels don't lie. Um, uh, uh, anyway, Jinder Mahal is the guy that you want to see get beat. That's how Jimmy Bell was in 2004 and 2005. Yep. He, he was a terrible worker, terrible in-ring worker, but he got the job done. He sold the tickets. You know, this is an interesting one with JBL, though. Like, I see Jeff's point on this. He's a guy that could literally be on both lists because – he was that gimmick. That was a heel gimmick. That's when you wanted to see the heel as champion lose. And, and he really didn't have many people that liked him. So that, that if you look at it from a business standpoint, that, that's interesting with JBL. He might fall in just, between. And just think about it. How, as much as we despise John Cena now, a lot of us do. I don't, but a lot of us do. How much were we clamoring for him to just finally take Bradshaw to WrestleMania that year? I wasn't. Really? Ben, why? What why? about you? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Ben. You first. Go ahead. Why, do you do you remember that? Did you want Cena to beat JBL? Yes. Are you a Cena fan? I'm not a super fan, but okay, he's all right. Whatever. Oh, all right. But, so right. I, I had so, to hear that. Though. All right. So Aaron, why weren't you rooting for a Cena against JBL at WrestleMania that year? Because I didn't care. I just. Did not care about the WWE title at that point. I mean, I guess I wanted Cena to win, but it wasn't like I remember. I well, I was okay. there and I was I, I was bored Cena with was the match. Win. I was bored with the match. I I almost fell asleep. Well, I I, remember, you know, yeah, I remember something. Virtue. Aaron, everybody but me and Lee went to that show because they were that all was at the, the pond. Was that at the uh, pond? It, it was, was Staples Center. It was a Staples Center. The pond was WrestleMania 2000. Yeah, everybody was at Staples except me and Lee. We're watching on TV. It didn't come off really bad the first time on TV, but when you go back and look at it now, WrestleMania was terrible that year, and both title matches were among the worst matches of the night. Wait, you're saying Wrestle? I wouldn't say WrestleMania as a whole was terrible. I would say the title matches were disappointing. Well, okay, it was it was an okay, decent show. Kurt Angle and Shawn Michaels stood out, of course, but everything Money in the bank. passed. Money in the bank. You know what? Or an I Undertaker. Like my, hey, hey, let me talk. Bro, let me talk. No, you talk yeah. too much. We knew everything. Cena was beating JBL. Everything up to the sumo match and the women's match, that time of the show was really good. Everything after that was really bad. I agree on that. The sumo match okay. was like the beginning of the end for that show. Well, was, was the women's match before or after the sumo match? Do you remember? I, I think it – I'm not sure actually. So because that was really bad too. That was really bad. Was I love Trish. So that was a horrible Christy match. Hemi versus Trish? Or for Trish, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, I thought it was anyway, a- we're off in the weeds again. We're off in the weeds again. Um, uh, yeah, John Cena as WWE champion, I think, is defining what WWE is right now. He, he's their guy. Yes. And, but what's funny is he's not champion right now, and he doesn't need to be. So wait, let, 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 let's uh, debate this. Okay, so Cena had his first reign in 2005. I believe he held the title until uh, New, New Year's resolution when Edge cashed yes. in Money in the Bank. Revolution, you are correct. What yes. did I say? Resolution? Resolution. Final Which revolution. Final? final resolution. Final revolution. Resolution. Revolution. Final resolution. What the hell is this? Logan's run? You know, TNA. <laughs> final resolution. No, nobody gets that but me, but that's okay. Um, Some comic book reference? No, it's a movie reference. From Wolverine. Go on Wikipedia. Logan's is, is, run. Is Logan up, Wolverine? Guys. No. Okay, well, then I have no idea. See, the uh, problem yeah. with Cena's title reigns is they. You could tell it was all marketing and that the spinner belt, like when, when they made Austin skull belt and that stuff, that felt organic because of his character. The, the Cena, I, I don't know, man. It's hard for me to say Cena is one of the best WWE champions. I'm serious. Not because I hate him. I just. Well, okay. Let me, let me counteract. That's fine. Stone Cold smoking skull belt was made by Austin to defy authority. Originally, that's why they debuted the spinner belt. Cena was spinning the face of tradition. He debuted his own belt, and that's bit that was the face of the belt for the next what it was eight years. Yeah. All so right. well, the th- go ahead. Go okay. Ahead. Well, I want to talk about Cena's two big reigns, and then I want to get your guys' opinion, and we'll debate which reign was better. So he had two reigns. The first one was um, WrestleMania to New Year's Revolution. Revolution, and then his second run was, I believe. 
Unforgiven 2006 when he beat Edge in the TLC match. And then, or it might have been his third, I'm, I'm sorry. But the reign that started at TLC when he beat Edge, Unforgiven 2006, and that lasted until he got hurt, which was, what, around... No over a year season. later, over, over a year, a year later. later. So he had the title for over a year, as we were talking about earlier. You know, a year, it seems to be like the... the right amount of time for being champion. And the gold it only, standard. It was only an injury that ended his run. Um, so the question is, which run was better, that 2005 run or the 2006 into 2007 run? Now, the first run, I did enjoy the JBL rematch that they had um, yes. at the Judgment Day pay-per-view. That was what they should have done at WrestleMania. And then Cena had some good matches with Kurt Angle. He had a, a good match with Chris Jericho at, at SummerSlam 2005. Um, so I think the 2005 run was actually really solid. Um, and then, of course, he successfully defended the title in the Elimination Chamber, which is something not a lot of people do. Has it been done besides John Cena successfully defending the title? Back then, it wasn't done at all. Cena was the first. Right. Uh, no, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. 100 yeah. and, 100 and the first. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. How dare you? Triple H is going to get an ass for that one. That's okay. He hates me anyway. It's all right. Yeah. So then the 2006 run, um, that went through WrestleMania. So, of course, we had the really strong match with Shawn Michaels. They had a great rematch. Um, I believe it was in the UK, if I'm not mistaken. On Raw. It was on Raw. Yep. Yeah. Um, so that one was really solid, too. And then he had the match with the great Khali, but whatever. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Ben, which... Which reign do you think was better, the first one or the one from 2006 to 2007? The first one. And what would you say is the best match of either of those runs, in your opinion, your favorite match? Um, The one against JBL, the rematch at Judgment Day. What about you, Jeff? If you have to make a choice, which one was better? Well, okay, well, first of all, my choice is the first reign. And I only say that because the second reign, I think, was going to end with Orton anyway at No Mercy. They, they had to just do it five days early because he got hurt. So I, th- I think Orton was going to find a way to win the last man standing match against Cena and take the title anyway. That first run, very much like Hogan's run, very much like Bruno's run, that set us up for the last 10 years, 12 years now. Cena become ascending the throne, if you will, set us up for where, which is not a, necessarily a good place now. But Cena was the guy they were going with, much like Bruno, much like Blackman, much like Hogan, much like Austin. Virtue, your thoughts? Which one? Do you first, think first there? run, best match. The first run, the best match, SummerSlam against Chris Jericho. Oh, that that match was absolutely phenomenal. Go listen to the crowd. Oh, that they were hot was, for that match. They were engaged. And and that you know I could still I, I tolerated Cena back then. The well, it's funny. Exposure, it wasn't there yet. No, nope. I, I did not hate Cena. I, I you know me a big Jericho mark. I was cool with that. I, I, you know Jericho would be going on a hiatus after that. That's it. I mean I can't explain it any better. If you if you listen to the crowd during the Jericho Cena match, and then you go back and watch the main event, the crowd noise is way different. Hogan and Michaels, they're almost kind of flat. Really? You think so? I, I mean, they were loud because it's Hogan, loud because Michaels, but they were, they had been, it's very much like the whole thing with WrestleMania 18 where they had Hogan Rock and then they had I don't think it was uh, the that title bad. match. It, was, it wasn't that bad, but if you listen, the, the crowd noise is definitely a little bit lower for this big Icon versus Legend match because Cena and Jericho did such a good job. And you know what, Jeff, what I'm thinking about that, you know how Jericho and Triple H lost some heat at uh, WrestleMania 18 because of... Yep. Rock and Hogan. I feel this SummerSlam in the non-main event, Jericho had the moment he wanted, even though it was a Cena. Yep. yep. That he didn't get at WrestleMania 18 with the reaction. Right. Well, you I know mean, that is. Well, so funny, the, the, you, you could. It's funny. You mentioned that they weren't hating on Cena yet. They actually were. That was the first time yeah. that the heel against Cena was getting the dominant cheers because they love Chris Jericho so much. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. very dynamic, man. Wow. Great match. Great yeah. dynamic. I, I, I agree with you, by the way. That was the best match in the series of, of Cena's first reign was the Jericho match. The Jericho yeah. series. Well, there you go. I, I think I would go with the first run and just because it, it was definitely a reign that defined John Cena and really got his career going and established him as the guy in WWE. Um, now, after Cena's 2007 reign, we had Randy Orton, and I think that that was a pretty solid reign. That was the age of Orton. <laughs> And that might have been – I'm, I'm looking back at all of Orton's runs as WWE champion. I think that 2007 to 2008 one was the best one. He, uh, he beat Jeff Hardy or Jeff Harvey as Mike Adamley called him at the Royal Rumble. 
and then he successfully defended the WWE title. That doesn't happen often where the Royal Rumble winner goes to WrestleMania and the champion retains. It doesn't happen a lot. And Orton did successfully retain in a triple threat match, although he did lose it the next month. Well, you got to remember, Cena cashed in at No Way Out and still didn't win the title because he lost by his qualification. So, that, I mean, Orton didn't win the match, but he retained the title. So that's smart champion right there. Yeah, I was there at that show, too, the, the 2008. So he, the crowd was so hot for that match, too. I was mean, that the one in Vegas? Yeah, they, they did, like, nothing in that match. It was basically every Orton Cena match you've ever seen, but the crowd was just going nuts for the whole thing. To be fair, that crowd was on fire all night. Yeah, that, that was a good crowd, and it was a sold-out yeah. crowd, by the way, you know. Thomas have, and Mac, baby. Got a little Thomas and Mac Center. Yeah. Uh, you know, they haven't really done a very good job of selling out the Thomas and Mac Center lately, but... Well, well, that, well, that's because they have the T-Mobile Arena now. That's why. I'm not sure they why move, that would have anything to do with it, but whatever. Be, because T-Mobile is a bigger arena than Thomas and Mac. And the, but Thomas and Mac, they still only fit 4,000 people for that last SmackDown. Okay, well... No, 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 no. They were, they were, they were T-Mobile for SmackDown, weren't they? No, they were Thomas and Mac Center. Oh, okay. Yeah, and they only drew about 4,000 people. But, you know, that's Yikes. a SmackDown TV taping. This was no way out. Uh, they had not one but two Elimination Chamber matches. Um, so I really like Orn's run. Uh, ben, your thoughts on Orn's run, and what other ones come off the top of your head as your favorite WWE title reigns in recent history? Um, I thought the Randy Orton title reign was fairly good, and there was some good booking with it. Um there's not really any more I can think of apart from CM Punk. CM Punk. Well, let's CM Punk. Let's talk about CM, Punk. Yeah, CM Punk. Yeah. What do you so, think, Ben? I, I keep asking you these questions because I know they're more relevant to you. You know, you're 14. AJ Styles passed the past year, his reign. Yeah, a lot. From that. where he came from, his whole career being 39 years old. How do you think yeah. that holds up with all these other great title reigns? I think it's at least in the top 20. What do you think, Jeff? I think I think AJ could have reigned a lot longer. I think he was one of those guys that could have been he's like a CM Punk, like a, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. I agree with that. He should still be the WWE champion now. The fact that number one, they didn't need to give Cena the belt, the title. Sorry, Vince, to only uh, to only have him have it for a month. That was so stupid. Yeah. Well, Ugh. you know what? I think when AJ was champion, even though, you know, some might say, you know, the whole thing with James Ellsworth was a joke and that shouldn't have happened. I was fine with it. You know, Dean Ambrose was playing the mind games with him. I was OK with that. It just felt right when AJ was champion. It felt like the best guy in the company was the WWE champion. And that's how I feel yep. it should always yep. be. The guy who has yes. the most credibility should be WWE champion. I feel ever since AJ lost it, the title has really gone downhill. You know, in 2017... Which shows how great of a WWE champion AJ was. Yeah, I think about, I about, think about the title it. when he was think champion. John Cena for a month, just to get the, the flair record, which is stupid. Bray Wyatt for less than two months. Yeah. And, that we'll get horrible, and, that, and that horrible match with Orton. Like, my God. And then Orton's run, and then Orton's run wasn't even all that good before he lost to Jinder Mahal. Yeah, and then we got Mahal. But we'll talk about those on, a, on another video. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess let's so. go back. CM Punk. Um, 434 days as WWE champion. I mean, arguably the best WWE title reign of the modern era. The only negative I have about it is that it felt like for a lot of that run, he was stuck in the mid-card matches. They were putting the WWE title matches somewhere in the mid-card. You know, the, the matches with Jericho would be on the middle of the show. And I felt that that yep. hurt a little bit. But still, Punk brought credibility to the title and... You know, you you took him seriously as as being the best in the world. I mean, he really did live up to that moniker. It's just the WWE didn't position him. It wasn't until he turned heel. When he turned heel, he started being in the main events again, and uh, he would win by cheating and whatnot. But by that point, you know, he had already established himself as a big deal. And you know, when he cut that promo with The Rock, you know, your arms are too short to box with God. Um, you know, people people took Punk seriously, even though I think a lot of us, you know. The, the smart fans knew that, that uh, Punk was going to be dropping it to The Rock. But still, I, I felt that Punk <laughs> held his own in that feud. So I would say Punk's is definitely one of the best ever, you know, top five. I mean, Virtue, what do you think? Oh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I, I wish that first reign when he won, not the world, you know, because we're talking about the WWE Championship. So when he won at Money in the Bank, I think that was too short of a title reign. I know we're talking about his next reign. That was the longer reign. 
that first title reign from when he won it at Money in the Bank, that should have went all the way on until he lost against The Rock. I, I think yep. that would have, yeah. you know, Triple H politics got involved. They brought Nash in for some weird stuff. Oz. Um, but, yeah, she definitely – what's that? Oz? Yes. But, yeah, Paul's wizard, definitely yes. one of the greatest. I mean, when, when Vince McMahon keeps the belt on you for over 400 and some days, it, you're, you're one of the best. I mean, that's plain and simple. The bottom line is that match at Money in the Bank was, if, if I'm not mistaken, the last time the great and powerful Meltzer gave the WWE match a five star rating. That is true. And that match was yep. solid from start yeah. to finish. That whole feud yep. was solid from start to finish. And that that elevated because Cena had had the championship. People were like, okay, whatever. But it elevated it to the nth degree because those two guys. Punk, Punk had told the world he did it in front of me live at the Thomas and Mack Center again. I know because Aaron called me, the site's crashing. What the hell is going on? Because Punk's cutting promos and set the world on fire. Punk and, was a great contender and an even better champion for that run of this champion. If they put him oh. in the main events, he would have delivered. Yep. Exactly. And, and, and the thing is, they put him in the main events and he delivered. Absolutely. So yep. he's got to so. be one of the best. And uh, I do want to mention Seth Rollins, too. He won the money in the bank and then cashed it in at WrestleMania 31. One of my all-time favorite cash-ins. I was yep. there for that in Santa Clara. Crowd went nuts for it. Great way to end WrestleMania 31. And he had a pretty good run. I mean, he did uh, cheat a lot to win, but that, that's fairly standard. Um, he always got to see you, baby. And it was an injury that, that ended his run, too. He had a pretty lengthy run. I think it was, what, seven, eight months, and then he got hurt. And that ended yep. his title run. Um, and unfortunately, you know, the whole situation with the WWE title went downhill after that. But I, I thought Rollins was a very uh, solid champion. Well, it's funny. We, we sit here now. It's been two years since he lost the championship almost. Would we ever thought we would sit here and say of any of the three members of the Shield or anybody in the recent era that Seth Rollins was the most recent defining WWE champion? That's I wouldn't have thought that. I wouldn't have thought yeah, that. Yeah, it, it comes down to the way they're, they're booked, though. That's what and, um, and, but that's fine. But the thing is, turned heel and had a long run as the WWE champ. We might think that's good, but everyone's going to say no. Roman's reign sucked because the way he was booked. Well, again, and and the problem is Roman was supposed to be the guy from the Shield in the first place. He had the pedigree, he had the look, and everything. But people drew to Seth Rollins because, like me, they're independent fans crossing over to WWE, yeah. and they love Tyler Black. Yeah. So, you know, it's just it's just the way it was. All right. Um, are there any other guys that you had in mind that all right, any Aaron, you would like to bring up here? Attitude era, and it's hard because all three of these guys are all time great, but do they all do any of them have an all time great WWF championship run? I don't know. So I'm gonna ask you guys. Austin, Rock, and Mick Foley. That's a great question. It teetered, it teetered too much. The rain yeah, teetered a lot. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I, I think they were champion at a time where the, the championship was playing hot potato. Yeah, so, you know, it, yeah. there, there was no real def- – I mean, even even Austin, when he was champion for that period of time in 1998, he, it, it, you know, he lost the title almost right away at King of the Ring and then yeah. lost it in really horrible fashion at breakdown. And then his defining championship, or if you want to call that, his longest reign was that god-awful heel turn in, in 2001. Yeah, that was his longest reign, and uh, so, I guess you know, that, and, that would be, and I hate to say it because I'm not the big fan of Austin being a heel in 2001, but that was probably nope. his best reign. I mean, I, I think you have to call that his best reign. Well, uh, it, From a feel-good perspective, Mick Foley against The Rock. Uh, no, who did he beat? Was it The Rock? The Rock. The you're Rock. Good, you're good. Yeah, yeah. Good. He beat the, the Rock, rock the then rock. he lost to The Rock, then he beat The Rock, then he lost to The but, Rock. But let, from that perspective of that month that he had it, that, that was a feel-good moment. It's just it wasn't a very lengthy reign. It was yeah. very heartwarming, but, but Mick Foley himself has said this in his book and on his DVDs, on his biographies. He was in that spot. He put himself in that spot to get The Rock ready for Stone Cold Steve Austin. Because yeah. Stone Cold was hurt a little bit. He was feuding the Undertaker. He was building toward WrestleMania 15. But Austin had to climax the feud with Vince first in order to get to The Rock. So they did that, and they put Mick Foley in the spot to get The Rock ready, build The Rock up to. And the thing is that I quit match with Rock and Foley. At, I remember, Aaron, you were there too. We've yes. seen you on camera for the Austin the Vince uh, showdown there during yeah. that match. Um, more than, well, a couple times. Um that match showed The Rock's mean streak. That match showed The Rock would do whatever it took 
to regain or retain the title. And that's exactly what McFoley said he wanted to do. So, so from a behind the curtain standpoint, Mick Foley's reign was great. Right, right. For us looking at at the camera, going that was a really short reign. But if you pull the curtain back and read the books and watch the DVDs, it was it, it was it did exactly what it was supposed to do. Yes, that's true. It told the good story, but yeah, I wouldn't yep. say it was among yep. the greatest reigns. I don't think Mick Foley no. had a great reign as nope. champion. No. Same thing with Austin and Rock, except for maybe the 2001 Austin run as a heel, because he did have some successful title defenses at least. Well, I think I think the Rock, uh, the Rock, if I'm not mistaken, the Rock's longest run was from King of the Ring to No Mercy in 2000, right? I think so, and that was only what yep. three or four months. And 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 what defining match did he have during that? The Benoit match, I mean, I guess the Benoit right? match, the SummerSlam match. But, but the thing is, well, the thing is, the SummerSlam match was all about Kurt Angle coming back from the serious legitimate concussion. It wasn't the Rock's night. It was it was Kurt Angle's night. What did the they Rock's do it Unforgiven? Match. That was a four way, right? The, the, the four-way was, no, it was a... Uh, I thought it was a four-way with Benoit and... I'm not no, sure. No, but no, because hang on. No Mercy was Kurt and... Yeah, I'm not Rock. sure, but when Jeff's thinking about I'm it... Forget, no, 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 no. Unforgiven was Kurt versus Hunter because they were, they were doing Stephanie's loyalties. I think it was Benoit again. Or it was some sort of multi-person match. I mean, right. there you go. I, I stumped the trivia... Expert Jeff Meacham. You did very good. Um, I also want you to know mention. Who we didn't say Eddie. What about Eddie's reign? Um, eh. yeah, I mean, he had is the WrestleMania was, uh, SmackDown. Is he had the was, WrestleMania you know, title defense, which was good, and then he went into the feud with JBL, which you know the the Judgment Day match. Besides Eddie bleeding like crazy, I mean, I wasn't really a big fan of that, and then he lost the title. So I'm I'm, I'm not sure if I would say Eddie had a really great. Well, the, 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 I mean, Eddie's reign is very simple to find. He won it because of somebody else. And he lost it because of technicality. Yeah, and, and like Foley, it was more about the moment of him winning the title. And what just happened? We lost Ben. We lost, we lose ben? ben. we lost Ben. Wrap it up, Aaron. Do, 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 uh, he, he it is up. over in, in England, London or something like that. So Whoa. That's his bedtime. Well, I mean, if we're going to have technical difficulties, good to have it at the end. Anyways. Um, That's right. We'll wrap this thing up. Um, thank you to Ben for being on today. Virtue, Jeff. Pleasure as always to have you guys on. Um, virtue, your plugs. Follow me on Twitter at nodq underscore virtue and go to nodq.com and look for all the good stuff there, including Virtue's Rage. And you Jeff. can also get that beautiful Talk Wrestling t shirt. ProWrestlingTees.com. It ain't that expensive, kids. Yep. Um, and you also get the official NoDQ logo shirt, which I think is pretty awesome, too. I'm not wearing it because I couldn't find it. Um, what? You lost it. So I, it's in the laundry. I just can't, it's in the bottom of the hamper. I haven't lost it yet. What, do you have like a million um, posts? I do have a million posts. True story. Like, Twitter, Instagram, underscore Jeff Meacham. You can find my uh, GDP yoga updates on my own channel whenever I do them. And, uh, of course, follow Aaron Rift at Aaron Rift and at nrdq.com, D-O-T-C-O-M. There you go. Thank you. You saved me the effort of having to say that. Uh, always. What, whatever I can do to help the boss man along once in a while, you know? Yep. All right. So that'll wrap it up, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. We will see you next time for the No DQ panel.